Just Pat Dunn, uh, technical program manager at Microsoft IT. Uh, we started our, our journey with the Power Apps team about two years ago, um, and it's been a just a remarkable journey. We've watched the the product just progress from this idea that had potential to really being a viable enterprise solution, um, and and I'll, I'll show you that that today. Currently, we've deployed our solutions. We, we have about 10 apps that we've deployed uh, worldwide to 120,000 FTEs. Uh, our monthly usage is about 18,000 people. So in any given day, I can count about 2,000 to 2,500 unique users. Um, so I, you know, I'm here to tell you that this can really scale to the, the enterprise. Um, you don't need to know about my German. OK. So let's talk about Thrive. Uh, so Thrive is our employee experience that uh, um, we, we, you know, two years ago, we, we said we want, uh, as part of our digital transformation, we want to take our, our aging app infrastructure, we want to move it uh, to the cloud, we want to move it to, uh, um, to, to mobile. Uh, it's got to be world class, no compromises. Power Apps uh, actually was a great fit for us because uh, you can just, it's so easy to develop a nice looking UI. It just, it, it looks crisp, it looks really sharp. Uh, when people get in there uh, as, as a developer, as a maker, it's just really easy for them to, to get started. Um, and it's great because you can build it once and consume it in a number of different ways, which I'll, I'll show you today. Um, so you can see from, from uh, on this diagram right here, we have, uh, we have a home app. Um, and a home app is, is our aggregator for content. This is where we, we push cards, um, you know, like uh, company news, uh, tasks that you have to perform, and, and so forth. And then we have a series of node apps um, around the, the side. Uh, people can get directly into our node apps if they want to. You know, if you, we, we create short links for each of them. Uh, we use aka.ms, but you guys could use bit.ly or something like that. Um, and people can go directly into it. But we like to use our home app as that kind of you know, initial launching point that deep links into these other uh, scenarios. Right? Um, we, uh, um, uh, all of our apps are built on top of um, uh, Azure App Services. Uh, they're secured with OAuth 2.0. Um, we have uh, single sign-on uh, that, that's been enabled. So for the users, it's a completely seamless e experience. Um, at Microsoft, we enforce multi-factor auth, plus we also have conditional access policy. So your device needs to be enrolled um, in Intune in order to, to use our, our apps. Works absolutely seamlessly with that. You know, you log in, it prompts you that your device needs to be secured, takes you through the workflow, and now they're in the, the app. So it's, it's fairly painless for our users to come in. Um, just a little bit about the story. You know, we, we love dog food, so we, uh, um, we embedded with the Power Apps team a couple years ago um, do, and have driven more than 300 features and requests into the product. We're out there building enterprise apps as we discover bugs and gaps. We bring that to the, the product group. They've been just exceptional about fixing those, those issues. Okay. okay, this is our high level architecture. Um, so you can see these are the same group of apps that, that I showed you before. Um, every one of those apps connects through the um, RP service layer, which then in turn goes to the Power Apps APIM. Uh, the APIM acts as a proxy that comes back into um, our subscription. So we have the MSIT Azure subscription down here where we surface a series of these little atomic app services. What, what we've done is we've, we've created our own environment. So we're outside of the default environment. Um, we want, as an IT shop, we, we want you know, pe people to, to, um, uh, to see our apps and to have the feeling that these are official sponsored IT apps, not the, the kind of the viral Wild West. Um, so we've created our, our own environment. Um, in that environment, it's secured so that only a, a certain SG um, has maker privileges. You know, that's, that, that's my feature crew. Um, there, we've created these connection objects that sit on top of uh, um, these app services. Uh, the connection objects then are just open to the, the entire organization. I don't need to worry about locking them, them down because no one else has maker permissions in that app, so they can't reuse my connection objects, right? So that, that's my first level of security. Uh, these connection objects then, in turn, go back and talk to, uh, to various services. Um, so over here, we have uh, Office Graph. I do a lot of work in Graph, uh, right? So I can talk to AED there. Um, I can talk to Exchange Web Services there. I can talk to Dell Analytics there. If you're not familiar with Office Graph, you really need to, to go and, and look at it. It's phenomenal what you can do there. 
Um, we have, um, in our apps, we have a ticketing system. So if there is an issue, people can open up a, a ticket, attach a screenshot, um, and submit that um, in the app itself. That goes to CRM Online. Um, all of my APIs here uh, talk to Application Insights in the back end. So there I have telemetry, I have monitoring set up, so my team is alerted um, in case if there's an issue. So we had a philosophical um, conversation in the beginning. You know, much of what I described here, especially in Office Graph, is available through out-of-the-box connectors, right? So your community could uh, develop apps that could use these out-of-the-box connectors, but if you do that, uh, you don't know when it's broken. Um, you don't get telemetry on it. So uh, you don't get things like output caching. So what we did is we built wrappers over the top of all that stuff. Um, the idea being too that we now have the building blocks so that as other makers come in and they want to build things that they can just reuse what we built. Okay? Um, and then this right here is just kind of representing that uh, we have uh, LOB scenarios too, line, line of business applications, uh, things like our, our uh, time away system. So we have pathways <coughs> then through those app services that, that tunnel back um, sometimes into the corporate network, um, sometimes to other uh, Azure systems. Um, in this case, what I'm going to show you today, uh, for the time away system, uh, we're using Express Route uh, to talk to a SQL database that's in IaaS. Okay? Um, then on this part right here, we have the enterprise card stream. So this is a service that, that we're, um, we're currently refactoring. The idea here is that you can push cards and content and tasks um, into our home app, which will light up these other scenarios, right? Um, and uh, um, and when, when needed, we can use Flow for push notifications. So we've used the push notification connector then to push things, but we push it back into the home app. Since we want everybody to keep on coming back in the home app, we push uh, all the push notifications come in here, you land on here, um, we pass the card ID as an input parameter, and then you can see, oh, here's my card, here's my task, you click on it, and then it'll launch one of these node apps over here. Okay, that's a super, super uh, quick gloss through of our architecture. Um, let me, this is our existing time away solution. This was built about 20 years ago when I started at Microsoft uh, down here. It said powered by SQL Server 2000. It has <laughs> not changed one bit since then. Uh, this is in CorpNet, requires a CorpNet connection. Uh, there's VB script uh, modal dialog boxes that pop up when you make, uh, uh, when you have an error. The UI is super clunky. You have to navigate through these, you know, week by week here. Um, there's like zero workflow for, for this, um, you know, like you, you do this and then, then you do all those other things afterwards, you know, like, like send a meeting request to your colleagues, um, clear your calendar. Um, so there's, th this is just completely standalone, right? So people really despise this app. Um, and my usage of this app is actually really poor as a result. Here's the new solution, um, which I'll just give you a brief demo um, on this right after this. Uh, this is accessible anywhere. So um, I built it once, and it works on the web, mobile. Um, I can embed it in different uh, um, scenarios. The, the UI has been really streamlined. Um, and we have, uh, we're using Office Graph then to do uh, workflow automation after that. OK. So demo got <coughs> going. This is one of my environments. Because of course it is, okay. So this is one of my environments. You can see I have a, a UAT environment. Um, I also have a dev environment and a production environment. Um, we sandbox that on purpose. I will show you this time away app. Loader screen right here. Uh, we're using timers right now to, uh, um, to fire off a series of API calls. Uh, that's being refactored to use the new concurrent function. So if you're, if you're not using concurrent, you should be moving to concurrent. Uh, all your API calls will fire in parallel and your code is much, much cleaner. Um, you can see we have a dashboard. We have a history view. Um, I can submit new vacation requests. You know, we have a, a slide up control on the bottom. I paint a calendar for you. I fetch holiday information from, uh, um, there's a SharePoint uh, list that we have that has all of our holidays. I can see that the vacation days that I've already submitted are already highlighted. If I go over here in the future, see I'm gonna take the second and third off. Uh, 
another API call just fired right there. Um, we have a pop-up. This is on a timer. I'm going to change that to the notify function soon. Uh, now I have workflow options. So I can tell my team. And here, this is using Dell Frequent Contacts now. So it knows the people that I work with the most. It suggests them to me. So I work with my colleague, Eric. But if there's someone that's not on the list, I can type in their name. It'll make an, uh, um, an AAD search, or it'll make a graph search, rather, to AAD. And it'll uh, um, fetch that, that colleague uh, plus their photo. I can add them here. And so this is using those connectors to send out um, a calendar invite directly? Yep, that's right. And then um, I'm also using, there's a, what is that, mailbox settings, I think, in, in Graph mm -hmm. that lets you talk to your out-of-office message. So we give you some boilerplate text here. You can really cool. choose to uh, accept that or modify it, submit it. And I've just now put that on my auto-reply, too. So on the first and second, um, when uh, people will get that, that message automatically. Okay. So that's just a super, super brief demo of what we, what we built there. Um, Do you just need to push this button? Get the wrong one? OK. So just really quickly about our, our process. We maintain all of our backlogs um, in VSTS. You can see a screenshot of our backlog over there on the right-hand side. We use a, a full development process. You know, there's no compromises here for the, um, for the all-up process. We're an agile shop. Um, but anytime that we come up with a new scenario, then we go through a UX process, going first from static prototypes to dynamic prototypes. Uh, we use tools like Balsamic and Protopy to do that. Uh, we've also used Marvel, Sketch, Blend. Uh, we have an engineering team that's located in Hyder Hyderabad. They develop the C Sharp application services. I have a Chennai team, which has become specialized in building the power apps themselves. Um, and so the, the, these guys are just a, a shop that, that just continually turns out world class solutions. They, they do a great job. Uh, for our testing, and this is like su super brief again, um, we, uh, we use Fiddler traces. So if you're not using Fiddler to, uh, to troubleshoot your app, you definitely should. Uh, you can set up a filter on starapim.net. You see only your API calls, um, and you can go in there um, and see exactly what, what uh, your system is, or what your app is sending and what it's getting back. Uh, we use VSTS web tests. We take that Fiddler trace, uh, we port it out to, or we export it as a VSTS web test, uh, change the, uh, the bear token, make it a, make it a parameter, um, and then I can do a load test against my app. So um, in, in the past, I was able to, I had an, a conference app uh, with about 1,700 attendees. I was able to, um, uh, to simulate about 1,400 at, at a time. So I know that the platform can, can scale, and I have confidence. Um, in the meantime, there is throttling, though, so you'll start to see 429 errors if, if you do that. Um, and then we go through a full, you know, we, we have institutional paranoia, so we go through the full privacy, security, GDPR review process with every release that we have. Um, talked really briefly about the environments. I have dev, UAT, and production environments. Um, all my permissions only go to security groups. I never give permissions to individuals because it just becomes a huge mess. Uh, like I said, the connectors are shared with the entire org. The, uh, um, the apps themselves are shared to security groups. I have one group, which is my consumers, and then another group, which is going to be my, my makers. Um, in my UAT and production environments, I use a service account. So I have an account called um, MSIT Power Apps. Uh, that way, if when, when I submit an, an app or when I release an app, somebody can see that it's from the IT organization, and they go, this is the stamp of quality. Um, I, I take those apps then, um, and using, uh, um, uh, using our PowerShell commandlets, um, I set them as featured. So you, you should be well aware of, of the, the commandlets. Um, I set them as featured, and then the home app I set as the hero app. So as people open up the, the mobile experience, they'll see the home app on the very top, and it, in, it invites them in and kind of takes them past the, um, the Wild West piece of it. Right? Um, anytime that I promote my apps, um, I always build in my dev environment. Um, and when I think it's good, then I'll create a package. I'll export that to my UAT environment. 
uh, when that has been certified and we feel confident that we can move forward with it, we'll take that same package and then we'll promote that same package to, uh, um, to the prod environment. There's big changes coming in the, in the ALM space, you know, so this is really point in time. If you were to look at this presentation you know, three months from now, you'd go, oh, how quaint. Um, <laughs> but, but for right now, that's, that's what we do. Okay. Uh, quick tips and tricks. Uh, that, this looks like actual code. Look at that. That's my on visible. And it has like real code in it. Use comments. Uh, use the <laughs> concurrent function right here. Um, use your format. Uh, pretty soon there's going to be a pretty print feature. Um, use pretty print. Um, it will make your code so much easier to, uh, um, to follow. Uh, when you're doing releases, um, we like to create net new connectors. It takes a few minutes for that connector to register sometimes with the, the APIM. Depends on the time of day. You know, with, uh, with traffic, it's first, first in, first out. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll release a new app. I'll have a new connector. Um, and if I find any issues, when I roll the app back, it uses the old connector again. And I can instantly roll it back in, in you know, a matter of a minute. Uh, so yeah, went through the service accounts. Uh, discovery, so short URLs for everything. Makes it easier for your, your people to find your apps. There's a QR code generator on Bing. If you go to bing.com, you can see it there. Um, you can embed it um, in, uh, um, uh, in SharePoint sites. You can also, this is uh, in preview right now, but you can embed it uh, in Bing for Business. Do I have time to show that real quick, the, the Bing for Business embed? You could show it, yeah, yeah, real quick. But that's a really cool feature that's, that's the Bing team is releasing, right, in partnership. Okay, hang on one second. You just showed launching. Would be nice. Yeah, okay, so here, let me go switch here. For you. OK, so this is bing.com. Um, I am logged in as me. And if I search for certain keywords, like, say, time off, it has the embed of the app right there. That's the actual app embedded right there in the search results. Um, and we have our Kudos app doing that. There's a Holidays, holidays app that does that. Uh, for Time Away, I have two separate Time Away apps. One of them is for uh, domestic, the other one's for international. It looks at my security group and it paints the, the correct one over here. It's a super, super cool feature. So I you know, highly recommend that you guys do that. That is pretty cool. Uh, I think for business, I can switch it back. Okay. Yeah, and then the very last, I mentioned the featured and hero apps, and the very last thing, um, is uh, um, PowerShell commandlets. I think James has not only written the PowerShell commandlets, but also wrote a blog posting about those. Um, know thy commandlets um, <laughs> and, and use them. They will uh, definitely help with the enterprise uh, discovery. Right. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks a lot. You know,